tonight. <laughs> We're gonna have a good time tonight. Isn't God good? Oh my God. Y'all say this with me. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in. Glory. Get the Lord hand down, my brother. Yeah. And try not to mess it up. <laughs> That's it is gonna add to that scripture. Amen. Ain't God good. Let's stand up. Everybody stand up. Y'all say this with me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship. Oh, Lord. Give them another hand clap. All right. I love when the saints go marching in. Amen. Y'all remember that song? Y'all got to help me out a little bit. Wait a minute. Make sure this is working. Come on. There you are.
Oh, yeah. Doesn't it feel good not to be sweating on the way to church? Amen. It's been wonderful this morning. I, I thank God for the brisk, wonderful day. Ready? Let's do our song I saw the Lord.
He told us it was going to be this way. We know we're in conditions for what's coming down the road. Help us, Lord, in the challenges that come along with conditioning that we know and understand how to maneuver through all of this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. On the way down, tell somebody the past is behind us. The past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. impossible. Amen. Now, I'm going to kind of go over a little bit from last week, and then we're going to go. Now, remember, next week, because it's homecoming, we're going to be actually talking about Nehemiah again, which addresses the time that we live in. But then we're going to go back, and when we get through uh, Revelation chapter 6, then we're going to, I'm going to let you know ahead of time, we're going to do a Sunday or two on how to withstand in this last day of conditioning. And in this last day, uh, if if uh, by one, by some means we wind up in some, if, if you know if the pre-trippers are right, you don't have to worry about it. But if the mid-trippers are right, we may be through some of this. And plus, the conditioning is getting tougher and tougher. Uh, our lieutenant governor, all he did was speak out, just speak out against some of the crazy mess they're teaching in school now. And say so he even showed some of the pictures that, that, that in our school books, and and now he's being lampooned and beat up over what's going on, and want him to resign. And uh, I saw a picture where a, a, a pastor in Canada was being dragged off and arrested because he was not preaching conformity to the government mandates. So this stuff's getting real. I mean, it's getting, this is getting tough. So you got to be ready for what's coming. And that's why it's important. And that's why I believe that God's got us in Revelation also. So, so, we're talking about souls. The reason we're talking about, I'll get back in a minute about the souls that's in heaven uh, during the tribulation. It was very important that you see this. But again, how these people die is very simple. Revelation chapter 20 uh, verse 4 says, I saw thrones that they set upon them, and the judgment were given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or their, in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And so, now, I'm pretty sure to be other ways too, but the main instrument that's going to be used for Christians that don't make it in the rapture, they're in the tribulation, and now they're wanting to make it to heaven, when they refuse to take the mark, when they refuse to follow the Antichrist, the Bible clearly states they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Meaning, they could be a guillotine, but you know, lately we've seen it uh, where there's not even a guillotine used, where the guy's just. I mean, we, they, they, they stopped the, the video before you can see it all, but the guys just put on their knees and they saw their neck, just saw right through it. So who knows how they're going to do it, but it does say we hit it for the witness of Jesus. And I know this is not probably the most popular shouting message that you can preach, but this is probably right now the most needed of messages to be preached. And so uh, let's go ahead, just a few from last week. Jesus warns us just the beginning. It shows the results of that fury of the first four seals, which is in the first first uh, year and a half, two years. Some even say it's all uh, uh, three years or more of the tribulation. The tribulation is divided up like this. The whole tribulation period is seven years. The first three and a half years is called tribulation. The second three and a half years is called the great tribulation. And we'll get into it later, but what happens is the difference is before the great tribulation, Satan, who is controlling the Antichrist now, who has his spirit, at this point will be will be the embodiment of Satan. So it's going to be tough. The second three and a half years is going to be even tougher than the first three and a half years. So there's a tense scene, but now it's going to shift again from on earth, and it's going to talk about events in heaven. Now. Again, you've got to think about this as this is a panoramic. Part of Revelation is a panoramic view. When I say panoramic view is 
Um, and it talks about certain people. Although uh, it speaks of certain times because it's a, a panoramic view. Uh, just like with these saints here that are, that are being killed. They're going to be killed all the way through the seven years. But this is the first group that come up and, and, and they're running the altar. So here it is. And again, just to give you just to give you a little picture of what we were talking about in the beginning. Here's a picture of the tribulation saints. It shows they got a promise that people will be saved during tribulation. And probably without number, people will be saved in the tribulation. My question is though, wouldn't it be easier to go ahead and serve him now? I mean, uh, it's hard enough. All he, all he expects of us now is for us to give our life to him. But in order to make it a tribulation, you're going to have to give your life for him. There's a difference. Okay? In the tribulation period, you will have to die in order to make it. And the price, of course, is martyrdom. And the position here we're talking about here, they're under the altar. And so again, just real quick, the position, it was a place of sacrifice. And, and that word slain literally means to butcher or to slaughter, uh, just like a lamb, for the word of God and for the testimony that they held. And again, this, this is my last one, and we're going to jump right in to this morning. Uh, then the position, it was a place of safety because <clears throat> they're now in heaven and they're under the altar. They've been covered by the blood of Jesus' sacrifice. And it's amazing that although they went through, and you know, we hear people all the time talk about, well, we sure went through hell. Well, that was tough. That was tough. We went through hell. But you know what? Honestly, we don't know what going through hell is like it's going to be the tribulation of saints when the Holy Spirit is pulled out of the way. When the Holy Spirit is pulled out of the way and Satan is running rampant, then these people are literally going to go through hell. And so here's these guys. They're in heaven. They've been washed. They were, they were washed in the blood now under that altar. But again, remember, this is all symbolic of Old Testament. The the, 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 the raptured saints, they were, they were born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. They're, they, they were taken. They're, they're in heaven. They're with Jesus. They're in their glorified body. But you got these guys in heaven under the altar. And remember, soul. Remember it said souls? There's a reason why it says souls. For the, for the raptured saints, remember we talked about it, for the raptured saints, here's how it works. The Bible says that, the, that when, the, when the Lord comes back in the last trumpet of God, you'll hear the trumpet, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and they which are alive and remain, they all shall be changed to midair. Jesus is coming back and says he's bringing the saints with him. So what it means is when somebody dies, their spirit and their soul is with God, but their body's in the ground because we don't have a glorified body yet because time hasn't concluded. There's still, there's still all kinds of stuff going on. You don't have that glorified body. But at the rapture, when it says, we, 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 we're not, we might not all sleep, but we're all going to be changed, it literally means that this is the time that our mortal body puts on uh, an immortal body, our corrupt body puts on an incorrupt body. We become, at this point, we get our glorified body. And so now, we get a glorified body, we're taken into heaven with God. So, we now have experienced the full, uh, the, the fullness of salvation in this absolute fullness with our glorified bodies. The saints that are going to be saved during the tribulation period, although they're being saved when it talks about heaven, now they're under the altars in the Old Testament, under the Old Testament uh, uh, type. They're, they're, they're under the altar. And it talks about souls. They don't have the glorified body yet. They won't receive the glorified body until the end of tribulation. So their, their soul is in heaven. Just like right now, uh, uh, think about the people that died before us in Bethany. Her soul is in heaven and waiting for the day of the rapture where she can get that glorified body. So, so now, after the rapture, the souls are in heaven under the altar, waiting for the day when they get that glorified body. But although they don't have that glorified body, there's still some good things going to be happening to them when they get there. So here's what we're going to talk about now. So, so, so here it is. Their plea. 
they start crawl, calling before God and, and crying before Him. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will thou, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now, so I want you to see this now. It's an urgent prayer. And, and they, they said they cried. That word cried means strong emotions. These people, they went through hell. They gave their life. And they were wondering, okay, look at what we've been through, God. Look at what these people did to us. They took our homes. They, they took our jobs. They took everything we had, even our lives. How long before you judge them for the injustice that they've done against us? So, let's go a little bit further here. Shouldn't take too long today. It all depends on how we, how, how we get through this. Now the prayer that they do, remember again, because this is like in the this is like in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit's going to be in sprinkles, just like the Old Testament. And and remember, Jesus Christ, you're not going to be just accepting his death. You have to give your own life for this. And this is an Old Testament prayer. Because that how long is it going to be before you judge them and do vengeance for us? See, the age of grace is over. Once the seven years start. Age of grace is gone. It's over. It's done with. We live in the age of grace right now. I'm glad that we live in the age of grace. I like being able to, that when I mess up to be able to go to the Father and say, Lord, I've done it again. And he goes, Yeah, I knew you were going to do that. But my grace is covering you. Okay? Now, once you get over here, now it's going by like the Old Testament. You know, Acts chapter 7, when Stephen's dying, he says, lay not this in their charge. They're killing him. He's the first martyr. He's in a pit. They're stunning him to death. And he says, lay not this charge to them. That's grace. But now, no, no, no more grace. How long till you're going till you avenge us? Old Testament. Romans 12 uh, and 19 says, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath, to give, give God room to work. You don't have to do it. Some of us, we're not happy till we punish somebody for hurting us. I know we say that's not true. It is. It is. Sometimes we hurt people uh, openly because they've hurt us, and sometimes we're passive aggressive. We're, we're actually we're hurting them. We, we try to hurt them by not talking to them, or try to hurt them by pushing them to the side or ignoring them when they come in a room. But you know what? God ain't in that. Honestly, God's not in that. And so, but again, Old Testament is different than New Testament. New Testament, God said, don't do that. You've got to leave room for me to work. And if you leave room for me to work, then I'll fix it. But if you're going to try to fix it yourself through passive, aggressive, or aggressive, either way, then you're going to get what you get because you're the one controlling the punishment. So, so, so here we go. But now, now this is not so. God said, you don't do this. You make room for me. I will repay, says God. You don't return evil for evil, but you return good for evil. New Testament. Now, how long, God, before you tear them up? How long is it going to be before you take care of business, God? We gave our lives. We gave everything we had. We went through pure hell. How long? But look at what happens to them when they're up there. Although they're still souls, God's got His way. The Bible says that although they were under pressure, but now they're in paradise, they're with God. Now God does something special for them. First, look at the covering. He gives them white robes. White equals righteousness. It says it was given to them. That word given literally means to minister to. So these weren't given white robes. They were ministered to. God's wiping the tears from their eyes. God's doing something special for them. God is wrapping them up in his love. And so here it is. You trade your sorrows and your pain for those white robes. And it said everyone was given one. Every person that gave their life 
during tribulation. Wow. How many feel like this sometimes? You're carrying a great big boulder up to you. I feel like it every now and then. I know everybody does. We're carrying a heavy load. I can't imagine putting my head in a guillotine and knowing I'm getting ready to die. Can't imagine. And my question is, if that comes down to you, could you say, go ahead, take my hand. I'll never, ever deny Jesus. Did you do that? I think about that young lady in Columbine that stood up knowing that God was going to kill her if she didn't recant Jesus, and she didn't recant. He killed her. You say, well, her life was short-lived. Her life might have been short-lived, but man, oh man, she spoke volumes that day. And she said, I will never deny Jesus as my Savior. The Bible says they had a consolation, they had some comfort. He said, I want you to rest a while. Your struggles were over. Again, there's no way I can even imagine what these guys are going to go through. I watch them and I see things. I see the struggles. I see struggles people are going through. And as a pastor, I'm privy to a lot of things that not everybody else is privy to the struggles. B5, Pitt, I'm, I'm, I'm privy to a lot of struggles. And honestly, people are hurting so bad. There's people that don't even come to this church that honestly, uh, they may not ever step foot in church, but I minister to them all. A lot of people are going through a lot of things. A lot of hurts, a lot of aches, a lot of pain. But nothing compares to what these people do. He says, I want you to rest for a little season. You got some rewards coming. You're going to live through this thousand years with Jesus Christ, and you're going to be reigning with Him. And don't worry. Because as you're reigning with him, God's going to be raining down fire on Satan. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 9, But resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brother who are in the world. Something I've noticed, and I catch myself doing it, and I have to, I have to stop myself is if we're not careful, we'll start comparing our trials to somebody else's trials. And even start thinking that we're the only one going through what we're going through. There was times when Bethany was in the cancer center and she had this two great, that great big tumor the size of two fists on her side and her insides eat up. And bless her heart, she couldn't help it because there was so much fluid flowing, necrotic fluid. She smelled like death all the time. And there was times where I might be tempted to think, God, can it get any worse? And then I would notice people would come in and be in a room next to her on this side, a room next to her on this side. And the next day, during the night, that person left. During the night, that person left. They were not discharged. They were dying. So whenever I got a thought of, can it get any worse? 
I would just walk by down that hallway and I start praying for people. As I went by the rooms, I just start praying for them. And I say, God, please don't let me get caught up thinking I'm the only <coughs> one going through this. Bethany is the only one going through this. You may feel like you're the only one going through what you're going to think about. <coughs> The trial may be wrapped up in a different kind of box, but if you open up the box, <laughs> there's many people going through the same thing you're going through. So the question is not whether you're the only one going through it. The question is how are you going through it? And what kind of witness do you show? Because there's people in here right now, you have no idea what they're going through, the struggles they're facing, what they're thinking in their head, what they're thinking in their heart right now. But they're watching you as you go through your struggle. And that can be a determining factor when if they can stand one more day. One more day. I know I've told this before, this story, but I feel compelled to tell it right now. There was a group of ministers going to some type of meeting, uh, church meeting, and they were in a big city. And before the meeting, they all got together. It was in New York. They got together, and they were going to eat before the meeting. So they gathered together to meet and eat. And while they're eating, the waitress comes up and says, can I help you serve? What can I get for you? And the Holy Spirit nudges one of the ministers and says, tell her that God loves her. And the minister just kind of shook it off. She came back again, and the Holy Spirit nudged him again and said, tell her that I love her. He said, God, I should think I'm crazy, and uh, I get to go to this meeting, and I... Uh, and three or four times the Holy Spirit nudged him to tell her that God loved her. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll tell her next time I'm in here. They go to the meeting. And when they come out of the meeting, they look down the road in this restaurant. They notice there's a rescue squad out there. So they walk down to see what's going on. When they walk out to see what's going on, it's a true story. They find out that waitress had committed suicide in the back room and left a note that said, nobody loves me. Wow. You never know the impact you have on other people because everybody, y'all say it, everybody. Everybody. Everybody's going through something. Everybody. So now, a consolation, yet a little while, <clears throat> I can tell you right now, what you're going through, in comparison to what you're going to get on the other side, this is nothing. Just a little bitty push. It's small compared to what's coming. It said, just a little while, and to your fellow servants, the ones doing the same work, going and going through the same thing, the brethren in the same family, they're going to be killed too in the same thing. My biggest thing I do, especially, especially when I'm at the detention center, is to tell people don't get caught up in the trap about the only one going through something. Because you're not. You got brothers and sisters going through the same thing. And what we're going through is small potatoes compared to when the tri full tribulation takes over and especially great tribulation it's going to be a slaughter. It's going to be a bloodbath like you couldn't believe. Mark, you're going to 
We're going to talk about the very first battle of Gog and Magog in the very beginning of tribulation and how their weapons are going to burn for seven years. Seven year tribulation. And it's going to take seven months to bury the dead. And that's just those fighting the battle of Gog and Magog. Now I add to it all the people that refuse to give in to the Antichrist. And they lose their heads. Wow. I love this. I will never forget you, my people. I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. I will never forget my own. You say, well, he loves me so much. Why am I going through so much? Well, let me just kind of clarify this. Some things you go through, listen carefully. Some things you go through, you bring on yourself. Some things you go through, you're collateral damage for somebody else's battle. Sometimes I feel like the land of the stuff I go through is cloud and cloud or damage. Because I didn't start the fight. Joshua and Caleb, they couldn't go into the promised land. They had marched around 40 years with the other guys until they died off. So Joshua and Caleb were cloud or damage. They had to wait. Sometimes you're collateral damage because you're having to go through something because somebody else in your family, on your job, somewhere, they messed up. They blew it. And so <coughs> you are a part of their healing and or going through. So sometimes you bring it on yourself. Sometimes you're collateral damage. Sometimes it's just the devil's fighting you with everything he's got. He's doing everything he can trying to get you to give up to let go of that hope. Sometimes God is allowing you to either steer you or strengthen you or both. But the start of it all was in that garden of Eden. And he said, from now on, God did, there's going to be problems. Again, I can't stress it enough. <clears throat> Things may be bad for you right now, but you hold them just a little while. And God's going to take care of things, number one. And number two, I don't want to miss out and be stuck with those tribulation saints. I want to go on the first bus line, get my glorified body. They were faithful in the death. So God gave them refuge, He gave them rest, He gave them robes. Again, I want to show you. I see this every day. I wear this every day. I'm giving away probably 10 of these this week. I gave away one in the Harbor Freight last night. You know, uh, I give them away wherever I go to Walmart or I can be wherever. And people look at it and go, wow, it's powerful. Let's take it off and give it to them. But a great philosopher, Beth Bennett, Fighting that cancer. God's got this, Dad. God's got it. God's got this, Dad. Beth, I, I, I would die in your place if I could. She goes, No, don't worry about that, but either way, I'll win. I'll win. Right now, whatever you're going through, just know this God's got you. He's the good shepherd. He's not going to let go. And either way, no matter what happens, you win. Think about it. Maybe if, 
it, it was just the effect of sin on the world and God steering you or directing you or strengthening you, if you're collateral damage, or you messed up your own self, God's grace is here today. Everybody, everybody stand up and close your eyes. Randy, come here and bless us. I just want to shout the message. Matter of fact, if this would not be to shout the message, something would be wrong. This is a powerful message. Linda Martin is having surgery uh, Friday. And so we want to pray for Linda and, and for Dudley. It's because because I'm not just one goes through this, it's always two. Okay? Ready? Y'all guys come here and let's pray together. Bless them, Lord, bless them. If you're here today and thinking, wow, 
I don't know if I can go through what I'm going through because it's so tough. Honestly, and I'm not belittling what you're going through because it's some tough stuff we go through. But in comparison to eternity with God and His rest and His peace, it's only for a little while. And you're not the only one going through it. All over this world, people are going through the same thing. Same thing just wrapped in a different package, but it's the same thing. If you're needing help for God to sure you up and to shore you up for what you're going through, and nobody look around, every head bowed, every eye closed, we just put that hand up and say, God, I just need to, I need to redirect my focus right now during this trial. Bless the Lord. Bless them. I need to redirect my focus. Let's pray together. Father, I know time is drawing near. We are being conditioned for what's coming. And Father, I ask you to help me to have a spirit of discernment to know how to handle everything that's coming. Help me to understand your word. Help me to understand this stuff that's going on through looking at your word. Help me to be ready for everything, for everything that you've called me to do. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for drawing me closer. And I thank you for accepting me just as I am. Because this is the age of grace. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Look at my sound of that episode. <laughs> Look, I'd love to be, be preaching rainbows right now. <laughs> you can't. Not with it. And with all the stuff I've seen a preacher being drug off because drug off, arrested and drug off because he wouldn't preach conform to the government. I didn't make that up. It's right there in black and white. You can look it up. It's in Canada, I believe it is. Then they showed it to me. And the way things are going, if you, if you try to, no, I'm kidding. It's getting to the point now where there is no free speech. So you better watch out. Be ready. Ready? All right. Brother Wayne, we just missed some prayer. Let's pray. God in heaven is a pleasure.